Most empires collapse from within. Most people's failures are self-inflicted. So protect yourself. That's what you control and that's how you lead a good life. Seneca said that anger is the most savage of the emotions, and he's right. Although it can somewhat be like glamorous and or exciting in a movie, I think we all know that anger is not a particularly good look on us or anyone. The Stoics were in positions of leadership. They were really smart. They lived in difficult, chaotic times. All of that was a recipe for losing your temper, which they knew they didn't want to do. And they knew it was contrary to the philosophical ideals that they studied. I'm Ryan Holiday. I've written more than 10 books about Stoicism now. I've talked about this philosophy to everyone from the NBA to the NFL, senators and special forces operators. I'm also just a regular human being who has found in my own life that I'm never proud of myself when I lose my temper. And so in today's episode, we're going to talk about some stoic strategies for keeping your anger under control, for not doing things out of anger that you're going to regret, not just stuffing that emotion down because that's not healthy, but processing it, channeling it, using it effectively in your own life. Let's get after it. I don't think I've ever lost my temper and then been glad after the fact, right? I'm never so glad I got angry, I got upset. It, it never makes things better. That, that's what the Stokes believe, that anger always makes stuff worse. And Seneca points out how totally irrational this is. To get angry is like to return a kick to a mule or a bite to a dog. He writes this whole incredible essay on anger to Nero. He says the emperor can't afford to get angry. They have to be calm, they have to be rational. They have to think things through. You know, sports coach might get angry on purpose to rally the team, but an NBA coach who's not in control of their temper is just going to rack up technical fouls and make the team worse. So we control our tempers. It's not that we don't feel the anger. It's there. We know it's there, but we don't act on it. We try not to act on it because it always makes things worse. We regret it afterwards. The fact that we have that hangover is a really important sign that it's not an emotion or impulse that we want to give into. Yeah, people suck, people are annoying. But Marcus Aurelius, the, the emperor of Rome, he dealt with his share of difficult people. He says, is a world without these people possible? A certain percentage of people are gonna be like that, he says. So when you understand that, when you accept it, and then you bump into a rude, difficult, shameless, crappy person, you're not surprised. You go, this is one of those numbers. And he says, it helps you understand them, it helps you deal with them, and most of all, helps you not be caught off guard by them. But I think more importantly, it allows you to not take it personally. They're not like this on purpose. Somebody has to be this way and they're that person. So you might as well put up with them, brush it off and go do what you need to do. What do you do when somebody else makes a mistake? Marx really says other people's mistakes leave them to their makers. Meaning what other people say and do, they screw stuff up, that's their problem. Actually, no, it's not that they're, it's their problem. It's that it's not up to you. But what is up to you is learning from your own mistakes, avoiding error in your own life. So that's where the stoic focus is. Not on what other people are saying or doing, not on where someone is wrong. Have you seen that, that famous comic? I can't go to bed, honey. Someone is wrong on the internet. No, a stoic focus is on their their own actions, their own views, their own opinions on what they control. We leave other people's mistakes to them. And as Marcus really says, we try to be strict with ourselves, tolerant with others, because again, that's the only part of this that's up to us. Marx really didn't like people. I mean, you can't read meditations and not see this. He, he opens meditations with a meditation on how frustrating and obnoxious other people are. And even this idea, this idea of the obstacle is the way, that quote is him talking about other people, about how people get in our way, how people present obstacles. But he says that in that obstacle, there's an opportunity to actually practice this philosophy that you say you believe, to be good in spite of other people, to be just in the face of injustice, to be temperate in the face of intemperance that's being rewarded, to be courageous when everyone else is being cowardly and being rewarded for it. So for the Stoics, people are frustrating, people are an obstacle, but like all obstacles, they're also the way, there's something, it's a challenge we can rise to meet, we can be better for wrestling with other people's difficulties. So don't resent people, use them to become better.
You don't have to let this get to you, Marcus Aurelius says. You don't have to let it upset you. You always have the option to have no opinion, he says. You can just let it go. You can let it drift by like clouds, as the Buddhists talk about when they talk about thoughts. You don't have to let it sink in don't have to let it harm you. You don't have to let it get you riled up. You don't have to get worked up. You don't have to respond. You can just let it go. I want you to know that. You don't have to let this get to you. You can just let it go. The best revenge is to not be like that, the Stoics would say. And if you think about it, yes, people can hurt you, but when you look at those people, who they are, why they do what they do, it doesn't actually feel like they're getting away with anything. They're their own worst enemy. It sucks to be them. So the Stoics say you give up on revenge. You give up on getting even because you already won. You are already better by not being that person. The best revenge, Marx really says, is to not be like that. Everyone's concerned about someone doing violence to them, doing something harmful to them. But Marcus Aurelius reminds us that we do violence to our souls when we give in to bad urges, when we give in to our temper, when we betray our standards. We do violence to ourselves, to our soul, when we're not the person that we're capable of being. We let those standards lapse. We let ourselves be overwhelmed by destructive emotions or urges when, when our ego comes into play. Of course, you have to protect yourself from other people, from outside things, from externals. But to a large degree, you don't control most of that. Most empires collapse from within. Most people's failures are self-inflicted. Most shame is heaped upon ourselves by our own choices and actions. So protect yourself. That's what you control. Don't do violence to yourself, the Stoics say, and that's how you lead a good life. Stoicism is really, really simple. It's that while we don't control what happens to us, we control how we respond to what happens to us. The Stoics would say, yes, yeah, stuff goes wrong, stuff goes sideways, but we always have this opportunity to practice the four virtues, courage, temperance, justice, wisdom. It's not that there's nothing bad in the world, there's nothing frustrating in the world, there's not stuff we wouldn't want to happen. But when it does happen, it is nevertheless an opportunity to step up with courage, to be self-disciplined, to do something for other people, to practice, to learn, to experience wisdom. That's the idea of stoicism. We don't control what happens. We control how we respond to what happens. I hope you like this video. I hope you subscribe. But what I really want you to subscribe to is our daily stoic email. One bit of stoic wisdom, totally for free to the largest community of stoics ever in existence. You can sign up at dailystoic.com slash email. There's no spam. You can unsubscribe at any time. I love sending it. I've sent it every day for the last six years. And I hope to see you there at dailystoic.com slash email.